Hey, welcome back to Side by H. Out for another snowmobile rip today. The season's pretty short, so I just want to get rides in while I can. It's snowing out a little bit now. I'm parked here on the shore of Charbot Lake, so what I'm going to do is um, head south through Verona and cut off at Harrowsmith eventually, and head through Sydenham and up Highway 15. I'm eventually going to make it to Smith's Falls, and then from Smith's Falls, I'll head over to Perth, and then from Perth back to Charbot Lake here. So this ride will be just a little bit over 200 kilometers. Let's just get things going and get on the way here. into Verona right now about 35 kilometers into the trip. The majority of this 200 kilometer loop is going to be on old railbed trails and you will have to drive through some populated areas like this one here where you'll pass right along people's houses and property. The trails in these areas are also multi-use so you will come across people walking and skiing etc in the winter time and everything from ATVs to bicycles to horses in the summertime and a lot of people walk their dogs and stuff here too. So it is very important in these areas to keep the noise and the speed down and do what you can to not give power sports activities a bad name. Here's the Muddy Waters restaurant in Verona, so you have access to hot meals right off the trail here through the back. And just a couple hundred yards down past the restaurant here on the left, you'll have a parking lot on Highway 38 where you can unload your ATVs and snowmobiles to hit the trails for the day. And this next gate here, just up ahead, is the southernmost point you can get to with ATVs in the summertime. So the only way to get past here on a motorized vehicle is in the wintertime on a snowmobile. So I'm just heading my way across Highway 38 here right now in Harrowsmith, about 50 kilometers into the trip. So we're about 25% done the loop. This next section here is going to be on the E-Trail, about 75 kilometers to make it up to Smith's Falls. And just a few minutes here, not too far up the trail, we're gonna head through uh, the town of Sydenham and along Sydenham Lake, and then through some countryside, we'll cross Highway 15 and run kind of uh, up alongside Highway 15 into Smith's Falls.
So here is Sydenham Lake here. This is a fair sized lake. It's uh, several kilometers long for sure. Not sure the exact size, but I do know it has over 50 kilometers of shoreline on it. Uh, a lot of expensive houses and properties here. Pretty much everything you see, I would say, is definitely over a million dollars plus. So a little bit of a populated area here. You have to kind of take it easy through once again. And once we get through this little next section here, we can uh, open things up and make good time the rest of the way into Smith's Falls. It's a pretty wide open shot. Just to my left here is Eel Bay, which heads up quite a piece too. That's a fair sized body of water. Always lots of fish shacks and stuff around this area. A lot less this year than other years though. There's only a couple out there and a few guys out today, but it is a weekday. Something else that's pretty fascinating with a lot of these uh, rail bed trails is the causeways like I'm driving on right now. Instead of making bridges, they actually built uh, land bridges across a lot of the areas. And a lot of the valleys in the uh, forest we're gonna drive through here too, so. That was all done mid to late 1800s, so uh, it's pretty impressive when you see the amount of earth these guys moved about 150 years ago and the amount of work they did with uh, very limited machinery. So when I drive through these areas, I'm always very impressed with the manpower back in the day that did all this work here. Pretty mind blowing. And it's not just small sections they did here and there either. It, this goes on for hundreds and hundreds of miles, north, south, east, west. I know a lot of people find rail bed trails boring on snowmobiles and uh, ATVs, etc. But one thing I always do when I drive these trails is uh, kind of sit back and appreciate the amount of manual labor that was done, you know, like I said, up to 150 years ago or so. Very impressive. Okay, so I'm just crossing Highway 15 here right now between Smith Falls and Kingston, about the midway point between those two towns. 
We're about 90 of 200 kilometers into the trip. The next 35 kilometers into Smith's Falls is about uh, straight of trail as you're ever going to see pretty much. There's only a few minor bends in it. And other than that, it's straight as an arrow all the way into the horizon as far as you can see. Almost to the point of being a bit monotonous, so I won't put too much of this section in the video. What you see right now is what you get. The scenery doesn't really change or anything like that. There are a couple turnoffs before you get to Smith's Falls. You can head left and go through Newborough, Portland area, or you can cut off to the right up ahead and uh, go towards Lansdowne and Brockville, which links up with a lot of trails all through eastern Ontario right through to the Quebec border and places like uh, Hawkesbury. And you can head up towards uh, South Ottawa and everywhere in between. So a uh, pretty straight shot here, but you can link up with quite a bit of snowmobile riding as you get uh, towards Smith's Falls here. Try and make this quick. There's some uh, construction. There's a new housing uh, development going in here, so they're pounding rock. But anyway, we came uh, all the way up the E Trail here from Harrow Smith. Now we're in Smith's Falls, so we're going to take a right and head through town here. We are finally off the railbed trail here until we get on the far side of Perth again. Smith's Falls here is about 125 kilometers into the loop, so we got about 75 kilometers remaining still to get back home. We are on the E-Trail here still as well, and uh, we will be for the rest of the trip all the way back to Sharbot Lake where we started. After we get through town here in a few minutes, the next section is going to be a mix of forest trails with uh, quite a bit of farmland and a bit of ditch running along some side roads. Um, it'll be mostly private land we're going to run through next, which a few dozen farms in the area make this section of e-trail possible by opening their land up in the wintertime. So I'm just about to cross the frozen Rideau Canal here in just a few seconds up ahead. The Rideau Canal is just over 200 kilometers long, so pretty much actually the exact same distance as the uh, ride we're doing today. And it runs all the way from the Ottawa River in Ottawa and goes all the way down to the St. Lawrence River in Kingston. I guess its biggest claim to fame is uh, the world's longest skating rink up in the Ottawa end. I think it's about 8 kilometer long skating rink up there you can uh, head out on. It's still used by boats and uh, has a lot of locks in it. Much like the rail beds we just uh, ran on for the past couple of hours is a pretty impressive engineering feat also. It was started in the 1820s, I believe, and finished in the early 1830s. Apparently they were worried about uh, possible war with the United States at the time and the St. Lawrence River getting blocked off. So I guess they wanted to have a waterway to get up towards Ottawa and Montreal still. But anyways, just another impressive piece of engineering from uh, just shy of two centuries ago. Quite a bit of interesting history behind it. There definitely is noticeably less snow up here than we had in our first half of the trip for sure. Some of this trail here I'm heading through to get through Smith's Falls and as I head out of Smith's Falls is uh, also ATV trail in the summertime and this is usually a pretty sloppy muddy section through here so definitely could be worse. Anyways I'm just about to cross uh, Perth Road here right now which heads between Smith's Falls and Perth and then we'll head our way through a bunch of farmland and bush trail and make our way into Perth.
All right, we made it from uh, Smith Falls to Perth here down the E Trail, that way right there. We're uh, parked just behind the Wendy's on Highway 7 in Perth here. We're about 160 kilometers in, so about 40 more or so to Charbot Lake. So I have another section of uh, bush trail and private land up here next after I cross Highway 511. There's a little bit of a back road with some ditches too, not too much. The next stretch is just about six or seven kilometers long, I think. And then I'll cross Highway 7, and then I'll be back onto rail bed for the final stretch back to Charbot Lake. I'm a bit over four hours into the trip now, so this trip will usually end up taking about five hours or so, including stops. Just to my right here, if you turned, you'd be on trail number one, which splits off into a bunch of different trails to the north and goes east and west to a point and get into Lanark, Carlton Place, Almont, uh, up towards the Ottawa Valley and Armprior, etc. You can also uh, head west and then north, you can go through Calabogie, Renfrew, and White Lake. Here's the Tay Havelock trailhead parking lot right here. So here's another spot where you can uh, park trailers to unload snowmobiles and ATVs. So we're past Perth now, back on Railbed Trail. I did do an outro when I got back to Sharpen Lake, but a pretty good snow squall rolled in at the time and it was so windy you couldn't hear a word I was saying in the microphone. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more footage here and say goodbye for now. There should be a couple more snowmobile videos coming out this year before the snow melts, hopefully. This trip ended up being right about 204 kilometers in the end. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the ride and we'll see you very soon on the next video. Subscribe. Subscribe.